Hi, third grade. It's Mrs. Pecora here. I hope you have been enjoying reading the picture books, and now we're going to transition into reading a chapter book. So the chapter book that we're going to read is called A Good Night for Ghosts. It is a magic treehouse book. I'm not sure if you're familiar with magic treehouse books, but they're very good. Um, this is one of the main characters, Annie, and this is her brother, Jack, and they go on time traveling missions. Now, this book could be considered historical fiction. And what that means is it takes place at a specific time in history. And sometimes the characters are real. So in this book, you will meet a real character. And I'll explain more as we get to him. But Jack and Annie are fictional fictitious characters so they are not real so that is why this book is called historical fiction so there's some elements of truth to it and some elements of uh fakeness or not truth to it like jack and annie are not real people they are just characters so i hope you enjoy listening to me read all you have to do is sit back and relax and mrs pakora will read you can follow along if you would like also, boys and girls, Mrs. Pecora is outside today on this nice fall day, so I am reading outside. If you hear some noises, it might be birds singing, it might be the chipmunks chittering, it might be bugs buzzing, not really sure. But don't be alarmed, that's just background music. All right, so we are going to read A Good Night for Ghosts by Mary Pope Osborne. And boys and girls, if we're ever back in the library, I have the entire series of these books. So if you like them, you'll be more than welcome to check them out. All right, so here we go. A Good Night for Ghosts by Mary Pope Osborne. Magic Treehouse number 42, a Merlin mission. Okay, so this part is true here. This is the author, Mary Pope, Pope Osborne, telling us why she wrote this book. Dear reader, years ago, my husband Will and I lived for several weeks, weeks in the French Quarter in New Orleans while Will was performing in a play at the Sanger Theater. During that time, we fell in love with the city's architecture, food, and especially its music. Every night after Will's show, we sought out our favorite jazz bands. One of our best memories is visiting the New Orleans Jazz Museum and seeing the first coronet played by young Louis Armstrong, who grew up to be one of the greatest jazz performers the world has ever known. Soon after that stay in New Orleans, we started collecting Louis Armstrong's early recordings and began learning about his life. I always knew it was only a matter of time before Jack, Annie, and I would have an adventure in New Orleans with Louis Armstrong. And now I can say it was one of the best adventures we ever had. So boys and girls, this is what I'm talking about. New Orleans is a real place. It is a city in Louisiana. The French Quarter is a part of New Orleans. That is also real. Jazz is also real. It's a type of music. And Louis Armstrong, he is one of the greatest jazz performers the world has ever met. That is true. He is a real person. I'm not sure if he's still alive. I'll have to look it up. I think he did. Oh, no, I'm sorry, boys and girls. He did pass away. It was on your PowerPoint. So, but he was a real person. So that is what I'm talking about. This book is historical fiction. So let's continue on and see what happens in A Good Night for Ghosts. So boys and girls, this book has 11 chapters. Not sure if we'll get through a chapter each time or it might be just about 10 pages, but that's okay. Just sit back and relax. So this is from Louis Armstrong. I was so happy I did not know what to do. I had hit the big time. I was up north playing with the greats. My boyhood dream had come true at last. Louis Armstrong from Satchmo, My Life in New Orleans. So he actually said this statement, boys and girls, and he said it in this book called Satchmo, My Life in New Orleans. Here we go. Prologue. One summer day in Frog Creek, Pennsylvania, a mysterious treehouse appeared in the woods. A brother and sister named Jack and Annie soon learned that the treehouse was magic. It could take them to any time and place in history. They also learned that the treehouse belonged to Morgan Le Fay, a magical librarian from the legendary realm of Camelot. After Jack and Annie had traveled on many adventures for Morgan, Merlin the magician began sending them on Merlin missions in the treehouse. With help from the two young sorcerers named Teddy and Kathleen, Jack and Annie visited four mythical places and found valuable objects to help save Camelot. On their next four Merlin missions, Jack and Annie once again traveled to real times and real places in history. After they proved to Merlin that... 
They knew how to use magic wisely. He awarded them the Wand of Dianthus, a powerful magic wand that helped them make their own magic. With the help of the wand, Jack and Annie were able to find four secrets of happiness to help Merlin when he was in trouble. Now Merlin wants Jack and Annie to bring happiness to others by helping four creative people give their special gifts to the world. Chapter 1. Way Down Yonder in New Orleans. Jack was asleep. He was dreaming that he was sleeping on a boat. It was rocking back and forth, back and forth. Jack! Jack opened his eyes. It was just getting light outside. Rain was tapping against the window pane. Tappity, tap, tap. Jack closed his eyes again. Jack, get up! Jack opened one eye and looked up. Annie stood next to his bed. She was already dressed. She was even wearing her raincoat. They're here, she whispered. No, they're not, Jack said. He closed his eye. Yes, they are, said Annie. They're waiting for us. How do you know, Jack said. I dreamed it, said Annie. Oh, you dreamed it. Jack turned over and pulled the covers over his head. Go back to bed. It's really early and it's raining. Come on, Jack, said Annie. I saw them. They were wearing their cloaks and looking out the treehouse window. Great, said Jack. I just dreamed I was sleeping on a boat. But my dream was real, Jack, Annie said. Jack pretended to snore. Okay, said Annie. I guess you want me to go out there all by myself. You want me to have a great adventure while you just lie here dreaming about sleeping. If that's really what you want, I'll leave you alone. Good, said Jack. Have fun. Don't worry, I will, said Annie. And she left Jack's room. Jack lay still for a moment, listening to the rain fall outside. Darn, he thought. What if she's right? Jack heaved a sigh. <sighs> then he climbed out of bed. He pulled on his clothes and grabbed his backpack. He slipped down the stairs, put on his rain boots and raincoat, and headed out the front door. Annie was standing on the porch, waiting for him. Ready? she said. Jack just grunted. But as he and Annie took off in the cool, rainy dawn, he woke up completely. As they charged up the sidewalk, Jack's heart pounded with excitement. By the by the time they headed into Frog Creek Woods, Jack felt like he'd dreamed Annie's dream, too. Raindrops tapped on tree branches. Jack and Annie scrunched over fallen red and gold leaves until they came to the tallest oak. Jack looked up. Ta-da, said Annie. The treehouse was back. And Teddy and Kathleen were dressed in their dark cloaks, looking out the windows. Good morning, called Kathleen. We dreamed about you, said Jack. At least Annie did. Jack and, Ka or, I'm sorry, Teddy and Kathleen smiled as if this news didn't surprise them at all. Annie and Jack started up the rope ladder. When they climbed inside the treehouse, they hugged the two young enchanters. Welcome, said Kathleen. Her beautiful sea blue eyes sparkled. Do you have a new mission for us? Asked, said Jack. Indeed, said Teddy, smiling. Just like the last time, Merlin wants you to help a creative person bring his gifts into the world. And this will help you, said Kathleen. She pulled a book from her cloak. Great, said Jack. He took the book from Kathleen. The cover showed a street parade with musicians playing trumpets and trombones. The title was A History of New Orleans Music. New Orleans, said Annie. Yes, New Orleans, Louisiana, said Kathleen. You will love this city, said Teddy. Cool, said Annie. And here is your magic flute, said Kathleen. Pick, or I'm sorry, Kathleen picked up a gleaming, gleaming silver flute from the corner of the treehouse. It was the magic flute Jack had played on their adventure in Vienna, Austria. Only this time, Kathleen tossed the flute in the air. It hovered for a moment, then began to twirl around and around. There was a flash of blue light, and the flute was gone. Floating in its place was a shining brass instrument. Kathleen plucked the instrument from the air. This time, you will play a magic trumpet, she said. Oh, man, breathed Jack. That's incredible. Yeah, said Annie. I've always wanted to play the trumpet. Kathleen laughed. Well, this is your chance, she said. The trumpet's magic will make you a brilliant performer. But the magic can only happen once, Teddy reminded Jack and Annie. Just as on your last journey with the magic flute, Play the trumpet only when you face your greatest danger. And while one of us plays, the other has to make up a song, right? Said Annie, and whatever we sing will come true. 
Precisely, said Teddy. Um, what danger will we face in New Orleans? asked Jack. Perhaps none, said Teddy. But keep the magic trumpet with you just in case. And remember, after you've played it, the magic will be gone and it will become an ordinary trumpet. Got it, said Jack. He took a deep breath. Okay, said Annie. Ready? Wait, said Jack. Can you tell us what kind of creative genius we're looking for? We can do more than that, said Kathleen with a smile. We can tell you his name. It is Louis Armstrong. Louis Armstrong, repeated Jack. He knew that name. He is the king of jazz, said Teddy. The king of jazz, said Annie. Cool. Yes, said Kathleen. But Louis Armstrong won't know that when you meet him. It is your job to put him on the right path. To give his gifts to the world, said Annie. Got it. Good, said Teddy. And now you should go. Right, said Jack. He pointed to the cover of the book. I wish we could go there, he said, to New Orleans. To meet the king of jazz, said Annie. Good luck, said Teddy, as he and Kathleen waved goodbye. The wind started to blow. The treehouse started to spin. It spun.